Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm honored to be having with me in the studio for tonight, uh, Dr. Ali Khalifa, the international tourism, investment and uh, marketing expert. Uh, thank you very much once again for being with us uh, tonight here. Uh, we have seen over the past report the focus on Ra's al-Hikmah. How do you see the importance of uh, collaborating between Egypt and the United Arab Emirates and, of course, in general between Egypt and the Arab partners uh, in tourism in specific? Uh, what I see that that collaboration is not something new. This collaboration has been extending for decades, and uh, the United Arab Emirates is a very strong ally to Egypt since a long time ago. And uh, likewise, Egypt is a very strong ally for the United Arab Emirates. We support them everywhere, and uh, we uh, always uh, feel uh, pride that uh, many Emirati investors come in in Egypt and venture with their money and uh, uh, invest with uh, confidence the, the, and support the <coughs> Egyptian economy, which is something fantastic because uh, uh, w when you have a, a state encouragement uh, to their investors to come and invest in our economy, this actually boosts our economy, uh, um, uh, I would say, in, uh, positively. Uh, um, among international uh, markets and you know the reputation of United Arab Emirates today as a very advanced and, and modern country and, uh, and uh, we also uh, understand that uh, having uh, such investment in new areas, the areas that were um, like areas in the north coast for example, uh, the late investment uh, would boost uh, a great part of the Egyptian economy, would also uh, bring back this area into uh, the tourist map. Uh, we are uh, very delighted to see such a big investment, to see such a, uh, a, um, uh, I would say, uh, trust and confidence in our economy. Uh, we're very delighted to see some agreements that they're getting uh, signed, uh, signed off um, to develop the area so that they, it wouldn't work seasonally, it would work all year around, which yes. is something wonderful. <laughs> Uh, I think the role that United Arab Emirates is, is playing in investment in, in Egypt is a very uh, crucial role and it's also encouraging for other uh, potential partners uh, from the Gulf area and from also Europe to come and invest in, in our economy, whether it's industry, whether it's environment or tourism or any other uh, sector. Um, uh, thanks for United Arab Emirates for, for that. Thanks for that, such confidence and for uh, helping our economy by um, uh, finding jobs, new jobs for the companies. Uh, the sign-off deals, uh, they were immense, huge, massive. Uh, all these companies coming in with one focus is to develop the, new, the newly uh, invested area in Ras al-Hikmah. Um, it's, it's, it's always great news and positive news for the economy. It, it, it brings us uh, to a point where, where other, other players in the market are looking to us and, and perhaps this is something that it becomes an appetite for uh, a lot of other uh, um, countries to, to uh, copy the exact same uh, example. Thanks to United Arab Emirates and, and, uh, and um, but before I, I wanted also to first uh, yani, uh, Congratulate uh, us and, yes. and our uh, for the 6th of October uh, victory. Yes. And uh, having uh, such a strong movement in investment that comes within the months of October, after right after in the 6th of October here, it shows us that <coughs> it is it were not only we, not only that we did the victory to regain the Sinai, you know, 50 years ago, but also we are now starting to make victories in terms of um, uh, economy, in terms of encouragement, investment, and uh, developing uh, tourism. Yes, uh, we have seen as well uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi receiving the Emirati leader uh, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan at the airport and then uh, heading to uh, Ras al Hikma or to the north coast. We have seen a presentation of what will happen, what will be taking place in terms of construction and development uh, for this area. How do you see the importance of having the two leaders there and telling the world that this will be happening over the upcoming years in terms of development and reviving the tourism. It's, a, it's definitely a message and, and it's a very strong message to the rest of the world that uh, the, the two countries uh, uh, political leaders are hand by hand uh, supporting each other's economy 
we have we have Egypt has has always been supported by the United Arab Emirates and uh, and, um, uh, and the leaders of the United Arab Emirates uh, they 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 have a very strong uh, um, love for for Egyptian people. Um, they they uh, you would be surprised to know that. Uh, uh, the early Egyptians who went there in the time of the Federation of the United Arab Emirates, there yes. were many Egyptian engineers, Egyptian doctors, and uh, uh, th we they have had many of their of uh, the leaders have had uh, uh, you know wives as well from 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 Egypt. So we have like some sort of a, a blood connection between mm. us. Um, uh, the, you will be surprised because I live between uh, United Arab Emirates and, and Egypt and I yes. have to tell you the way how we get treated uh, in, in United Arab Emirates as Egyptians it's uh, extremely respectful, extremely uh, um, the economy is open, we can invest, you can have a company you can and, and the fact that you are from Egypt is, is a country they love, they respect and they it, it, it makes you feel like you're not in a foreign country. It makes you feel you're in, in your own uh, uh, um, land. And likewise, when Emiratis come here to Egypt, uh, we welcome them. We give them a very special welcome, both Emiratis and Saudis. But we, we give the Emiratis because they, they have always been uh, in, in support for us, especially after the, the, uh, the, uh, what happened 10 years ago. Uh, and the, during the time of the revolution and, and during this kind of turmoil, they were the first country to stand by us politically, the mm -hmm. first country to support us in the UN, the first country to, to help us, uh, to, uh, the first country to put uh, um, uh, loans and, and, and give us all the, these kind of boosters uh, to the economy. So thanks to uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, uh, he's been a kind supporter to our economy, to our people and uh, to our welfare. And, um, and I think the, this kind of relationship is going to foster not only in the Ras al Hikma project, but it will be in so many projects as well uh, that I can see many of these projects uh, in the pipeline. They have taken the investment of Ras al Hikma extremely seriously, and all the companies, nearly 35 companies in the UAE, one of the top companies are investing right now in Ras al Hikma. This is something, a real serious investment. Uh, I was so thrilled uh, the other day when I heard that. Uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Airport is going to invest in building a huge massive airport in Ras al Hikma. Um, so many of the top companies in, in the, whether construction, whether it's industrial, whether any of these th different companies are coming in to build different units, different, uh, uh, um, I would say, uh, uh, parts of the, of the entire, of the entire um, uh, area, the, this kind of uh, peninsula. They, they are uh, investing so much, they are building a huge community, that community is now going to work uh, during the uh, summertime as it is the case today is going to work all year around. And, and let's not forget uh, that, that this is not the first time uh, our brothers in the United Arab Emirates are investing in Egypt and loving uh, you know, Egypt as a destination. It's always um, uh, top investors and the, and the government, top investors are from the private sector are always coming to invest uh, in Egypt and we have so many examples uh, to this. Um, I would uh, salute this kind of relationship and, and uh, the support that the United Arab Emirates is giving us and, uh, and it's all because of uh, yani, uh, the late Sheikh Zayed has always been a, a supporter uh, for Egypt and, and Egypt will always be a supporter for the United Arab Emirates, I can yes. assure you that. And we have seen of course the project of uh, Ras al Hikma and the North Coast in general. Do you think that will be uh, a good opportunity for the real estate sector here in Egypt over the North Coast? It's not just about tourism, not just about creating job opportunities, but it could be a booster for the real estate sector and exporting this market for the Arab nations. It is not only the real estate uh, sector, uh, real estate is just one part of it, but, but the fact that having uh, a place that has been working uh, in, in terms of uh, seasonality, uh, one or two seasons a year and the rest of the year is shut down such as the north coast in general yes and the fact having to have uh, creating a, a dynamo in there uh, creating an engine in there mm -hmm. uh, economical uh, dynamo that brings all this energy to the to the rest of the uh, that actually pumps blood into the entire north coast 
is, is, an, is an amazing and a fantastic opportunity. Not only that engaging uh, Egyptian companies, you know, to work, but also uh, the, the local supplies, the local uh, suppliers will be able to work all year around. They will be, um, uh, it will be stand as a very attractive hub for um, uh, investors from the GCC area and for investors from, uh, from Europe as well. Um, um, recognizing the southern Mediterranean in general is something uh, uh, has been, yeah, I, I would say, it, it is something that we forgot for a very long time yes. to develop in a, in a much uh, more high-end, proper way. And I think uh, 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 utilizing the good weather, the amazing weather, whether in, 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 in winter or in summer, uh, less humidity, um, um, uh, the, the land there, the, the, the tranquility of the area, um, it, it all adds up to the charm of the place. And, uh, uh, and this is why it, it's such a tremendous uh, success to, to the economy, the, uh, all of these um, investments, uh, billions and billions of dollars coming into the Egyptian economy. And not only this is going to yield billions and billions of dollars every year that will help the Egyptian economy uh, to become stronger and also boost tourism, uh, a new kind of tourism, you know, to the north coast. Can we be having uh, a boost in the foreign direct investments in tourism? As you've mentioned that what is happening at Ra's al Hikmah is a message to the entire world. It's yes. a message uh, to the uh, Arab partners, yes. to the Arab yes. world as well, it's that trust. you could be coming and boosting some Absolutely. investments. Absolutely. It's affinity, it's trust, it's, uh, it's a certificate of security to that this economy is safe, that, that, that this economy helps out investors. Um, this is one of the reasons that I encouraged uh, the, the leaders in, in Saudi Arabia to also have a similar project on the Red Sea. So uh, we are going to see uh, various projects, that maybe similar projects, not necessarily going to be on the North Coast, but it could be on the Red Sea, it could be on the nearby the area of Sharm el Sheikh, it could be down the area of um, uh, the other opposite area of Gedda. Uh, on the Red Sea uh, near uh, Marsa Alam. Yes. So it could be any of these areas that many of these countries, um, they, first of all, these are, are uh, supporter countries. They all support us. We all support them. And, and, and it's a very reciprocal, the relationship. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and, and it, the, the good thing about the uh, relationship between Egypt and many of the Arab countries uh, these days, it's full of respect and it's full of support. Uh, and it's full of understanding and uh, also uh, there, there is always a, a room of collaboration whether it comes to investment or whether it's, a, it's engaging Egyptian companies. You'll be surprised to know that there are a lot of Egyptian companies are investing in the UAE mm. uh, nowadays and some of them are construction companies uh, yes. you know and, and these are big companies actually so many investment companies also in, in terms of real estate they are investing in Saudi Arabia right now. So we have this kind of, uh, of uh, a reciprocal uh, relationship uh, of investment, helps out uh, both economies to boost the economies, also increase the trust. Building a, an airport in Ras al-Hikmah, for example, is such a huge leap you know, to tourism in this area, you can imagine. Yes. Uh, because when they build an airport like that, it's not going to be a, a, a $500 million airport. It's going to be, yes. uh, you know, a uh, few billions of dollars uh, that, will, that such an airport will cost. If you see the, yes. the airport in Abu Dhabi and you see how, how magnificent that airport is and with all the technology and the, 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 the leap that, that happened, you know, for in terms of, of passenger handling and everything and, and, and getting the exact same company that did this kind of huge mega project to do it in Ras al-Hikma, that's a, that's, a, that's a huge booster to, uh, to our tourism in the North Coast. Yes, uh, Dr. Ali, allow me to be going to the sure. other report sure. of uh, the daily debate for tonight, focusing on the Egyptian initiative worth about 50 billion Egyptian pounds to be boosting tourism in the country. We'll be having more details in the upcoming reports. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and I'm honored to be having with me over the program for tonight uh, Dr. Ala Khalifa, the international tourism and uh, marketing as well as the investment expert. Thank you very much once again Thank for you. being with us uh, tonight. I will be uh, biased for the rest of the episode. How do you see the role of the Egyptian media outlets 
in promoting tourism. Here we are speaking about it. Yes. So uh, this is, and I have to salute uh, uh, our, uh, our your TV International, our Night TV International, for yes. the very vital uh, role in promoting and and, read and putting out ideas, you know, to promote uh, tourism and and uh, have a Clyde scope over uh, various projects in Egypt, whether it's investment, whether it's tourism, whether it's a, it's a, it's environmental, a lot of different projects, and uh, you have no idea how 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 you are yes. uh, supporting. And we can see work yes. from uh, Nile TV International Absolutely. to be promoting tourism. Absolutely, and it's uh, and and the director of the channel um, yes. here is is Mr. doing um, yes. Stagrid Hussein is yes. doing a fantastic work. Yeah. Um, she really has a, an amazing dream team. Um, I'm not saying this because um, perhaps uh, I, I will tell you something that it be, perhaps it will come as a surprise for you. I always go in various interviews in, in different channels. And, but most of the time, when it comes specifically from Nile TV International, I never say no, mm -hmm. because because I know That's that I'm, that, I, that, I'm, that, I, that I'll be interviewed, you know, with a with a very professional mm -hmm. team. Uh, we will speak about very valid projects and very valid topics. Uh, uh, the role that you are playing in getting the the message, the media message to the expats, to the foreigners, and to the rest of the world, uh, voicing out Egypt to the rest of the world, discussing different topics, is amazing because not only be, uh, people who live in Egypt and, 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 and non-Arabic speaking want to hear, um, they, of course they want to hear news about their own country, but also they want to hear local news. Mm. And the only way to get them the local news is to listen to Nile TV International. Mm. And I, the culture. And, and, I, and I have to tell you that uh, you, you putting focus and uh, spotlight into into various topics especially that helps out the economy uh, and the progress that we are seeing uh, you have been doing a vital role in uh, in the last two decades and i uh, and i salute uh, nile tv international for that how can we be maximizing the benefits uh, from the egyptian media outlets and more specifically nile tv international uh, to be boosting the tourism sector um, I would say, uh, uh, of course, w what we are, are having as these anchor news uh, that we are presenting all the time and, and also the interviews and, and the various um, episodes, um, it, it adds up to the, uh, uh, to the message, the media message that the channel is giving. But also I would, I would uh, suggest that, that it's a m more engagement uh, within. Uh, for example, we're talking about Ras al Hikma, we're yes. talking about North Coast, we're talking about um, the new museum, for example, or we're talking about. So going into these areas and, and getting live shots and, and engaging I with would people. I would love to go to Ras al Hikma. And, and uh, then we go together. Yeah, we go together. Then we go together and, <laughs> yeah. and see we have our. the same interview there. Absolutely. We yeah. go together and we meet our, our uh, uh, um, uh, beloved uh, brothers. Uh, the Emiratis, yes. um, uh, investors over there and members of the government. And let me tell you something in, in, in this regard, which uh, an incident that made me so thrilled, uh, so, uh, so happy and engaged and seeing how serious that project is. And perhaps, perhaps that's, I'm, I'm saying this for the first time, I was um, uh, uh, talking to a, a group of investors in the, in the uh, Red Sea, uh, about one big investment project which needed uh, some contribution and, and, and perhaps injection of various investment bodies. And uh, I, I spoke to some of the, of the high level investors in, in, in United Arab Emirates lately. That was just uh, like almost a month ago. Yes. And, uh, and the answer that I had is like, I'm sorry, Dr. Ala, we will have to put this on hold because we are focused now on Ras al-Hikmah. Mm. So, That's so the there is a, yeah, exactly. Mm. So when I heard this, y y you guys are focused on Ras al-Hikmah. This is fantastic. Mm. That means that it's 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 a mandate. It's a, uh, it is a, a everyone feeling that it's his duty to find a contribution, a valid contribution in the Ras al-Hikmah project. This showed me how serious 
you know uh, uh, the project is going to be and it showed me how how wonderful the project is going to be because when you get all of those people big companies such as these investment companies these companies that have done a mega billion dollar uh, investment before when you see them hmm. focusing their entire uh, uh, attention to Ras al Hikmah that means Ras al Hikmah is going to be. It is. it is extremely serious. I was mm -hmm. so thrilled. It's like, good luck. I'm happy, and I, I would love to see the project, you know, coming. But when they tell you that they are focusing at this year totally on Ras al Hikmah, this is good news. That means that not only that they injected, you know, uh, all of these investment, but also they want to see something happening on the ground within a year or two years. You're going to see things happening, you're going to see uh, a lot of steering into the economy mm -hmm. happening. So uh, this is why thanks to the United Arab Emirates for taking this seriously, for uh, um, helping out uh, our economy, for building such a great community that will boost uh, tourism all year around, that will help the North Coast, that will help great part of the Egyptian economy, will help the industries. And there's so this is not the only sector but, but there's so many sectors that are contributing um and and helping our economy with it it's it's such amazing this kind of steering and and i and i and i all what i can say is is i wish them all the best and all the best of luck and uh, i give them my full uh, support on the other hand we have seen uh, on a larger scope the initiative by the egyptian government's not just about ras al hikma or uh, the new alamein city for example but it's just more into tourism in general an initiative for 50 billion egyptian pounds to be boosting the tourism sector yes how do you think this strategy will be working over the upcoming years what it will be focusing on so one of the things that we need in order to to bring the number of tourism our tourists into the country to 30 million is that we need to double up the accommodation uh, uh, um, uh, capacity in egypt so to have that capacity uh, you need to double it up today uh, with the capacity is 210,000 rooms we need to make them at least 450,000 rooms mm. so the only way to do two things either to encourage the current ones the current owner of of hotels and and and, uh, and various accommodation places in order to build more uh, or to renovate what they have in order to raise the quality and, and hence come to the support of the Egyptian government putting out 50 billion Egyptian pounds at an interest rate of only 11 percent. Mm. Currently the interest rate is 27 percent or two. Else. Yes, mm. and when you have a very special interest rate at, at 11 percent that means the rest of the interest rate is paid by the government. Mm. This is such a great booster to the process of building, whether it's building, renovating, uh, renewing, uh, reinvestment into into exact same thing of, of building a, a tourism establishment. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the Egyptian government for th thinking this how, and, and this is not the, uh, a new one, it's actually, it's an old initiative that has been renewed every year mm -hmm. and kept every year. And so many investors in Egypt, I know personally, have utilized from this uh, kind of initiative and it's supported by the uh, uh, national bank and uh, by the central bank of egypt and it's an initiative by the government uh, and uh, and i i believe that this initiative will uh, boost at least 20 to 2 to 30 percent increase in the capacity of our accommodation uh, properties on the other hand how do you see the importance of uh, the cooperation between the private and the public sectors here in Egypt to be having more achievements and more development in tourism? Uh, the, the private sector plays a very vital role. Without the private sector, there would be no tourism. Mm. Uh, let's be honest. I mean, it's a, tourism is, a, is, a, is, a, is an industry that boosts at least 40, 50 other kind of industries. Yes. And as a supplier, as a subcontractor, in every way possible, whether it's a hotel, it's a travel company, it's a tourism uh, entity, it's a, it's, a, it's a cultural area, it's an adventure, anything. So without having mm. the private sector in tourism, there's no tourism. So the, the, the more we care about the private sector, the more we foster all of these different uh, collaborative uh, agreements between both uh, 
uh, private sector or public sector, the more we engage the private sector, the more investment it is. Mm -hmm. The more money coming into the tourism. Look at the, look at the top investors in Egypt in tourism, private sector. Mm -hmm. All of them. All of them. Yes. Name anyone. There is no uh, uh, public sector, all of them private sector. Is this a better strategy to be giving more responsibility for the private sector to be boosting the It is the, the rule economy? of a, a private sector. In any country, private sector is 99.9% .9 of tourism, mm. right? It's, it's the, the rule. Uh, it, it, uh, and the public sector, yes, they still have a little bit of a little chunk in the, in, in the tourism industry, especially when it comes to uh, providing areas of facilities or running airports or management of airports and, and you know, airspace and all of that. But still, private sector is the biggest invest, investment. And, and look what's happening in the North Coast right now. Look what's happening in the, in the, uh, in the uh, Ras al Hikma or in the areas around and, and all of these areas, Marasis and, and Al Alamein and all of that. You will find out that the rule of the private sector <laughs> is nearly getting the majority of all the investment assets uh, mm -hmm. in there. Thanks to our uh, own local private uh, 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 investors, thanks to the tourism companies in Egypt, thanks to uh, uh, all those who have had the courage to support their country within the time of crisis, I really salute them. Uh, private sector is a very, very vital role in boosting tourism. The more the, go the government gives support to the private sector, the more the private sector will give support to the uh, tourism mm -hmm. industry. On the other hand, the Egypt is trying to be granting more golden licenses uh, to the potential investors. We have seen about 25 golden licenses in 2023, uh, and we are aiming to be reaching 50 golden licenses by 20 by the end of 2024. I need, I need to have those as to be 50,000. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how do you see the importance so of the golden licenses itself? A, a, a golden license is a, is, a, is a way to faci it's a facility. It's yes. to facilitate. Uh, uh, procedures and, and procedures that may take a year or take few months can be done in a few weeks. This is a leap, in my opinion, to the encourages not only tourism but investment. Mm. Investment is always connected to tourism. Yes. And it, and it is that leap. It's important that the government said, "Hey, you are serious investor. Come, I'll give you all the support. I'll give you." whatever you need and this is a message to the rest of the world it's a message for anyone who would like to come and invest in egypt egypt is still the country that that uh, can 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 actually bring you a huge investment because it, it, it has potentials and uh, right now the government is giving this kind of golden uh, you know visa i would yes. say the golden uh, visa to get into uh, industry or to get into tourism or to get into these investment projects and uh, I, I, I salute the, uh, our government for this but I still wish that 50 is, is a very small number we need to make it more and more we and need more. thousands of it but uh, what are the incentives that you think should be given to the potential investors I think uh, you see you have to understand something about investment. Investment, uh, as much as it is, it, it's whomever goes into, there's no gain without pain, right? So you can't, uh, an investor normally would know where to put his money and he would need to find like a, a clear pathway, clear passage, you know, how the cycle, this circular economy of his money is going to happen, right? So the more assurances that we give to the investor that his money is safe, that his earnings are safe, that, that he will be able to reinvest into the country again, and if he, if he needs to pull out, he can. If he needs to, to exit, he can. All of these uh, messages are giving assurances to the investors that this is the right place uh, to invest in. Uh, facility in terms of uh, allocations, uh, accommodation, uh, labor, uh, all of these things also help out investors ease up the pressure uh, on them. In my opinion, um, I, I think we are um, uh, eradicating, and, and let me stress on that, we are, right now we are eradicating a bureaucracy in the, in, the, in the process. Yes. We are trying as much as we can to make things smoother, clearer for the investors so they know a very much clear path secured by a government who seriously want to have those investors coming in and putting the money into Egyptian economy 
more time. Yes, hopefully we can be doing that. As you mentioned, Absolutely. thousands more thousands in the upcoming wish, year. Yes. Alhamdulillah, ya Rab. Yes, uh, Dr. Ala Khalifa, Khalifa, the international tourism, marketing, and investment expert. Thank you thank very much you. for being with thank us tonight. You. All the best. And, time. and this brings us to the end of the daily debate for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.